This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guests tonight on Sports Files are the head coaches of the 54th annual AutoZone Liberty Bowl game, Paul Rhodes of Iowa State and Tulsa's Bill Blankenship. Happy holidays, everybody. On Monday afternoon at Liberty Bowl Stadium, the Iowa State Cyclones will meet the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in the annual AutoZone Liberty Bowl game. It'll be the second appearance in the bowl game for both schools, with Iowa State's last trip to Memphis taking place 40 years ago, resulting in a close loss to Georgia Tech, while Tulsa appeared in 2005, knocking off Fresno State. This season, the Golden Hurricane won the automatic trip to the Bluff City by defeating UCF in the Conference USA title game. Meanwhile, the Cyclones got the invite after a 6-6 six six season in the Big 12, which saw them knock off the likes of TCU and Baylor. And oh yes, defeat Monday's opponent 38-23 during the season's opening weekend. It's Iowa State versus Tulsa Part 2. We'll preview, review, and do so with head coaches Paul Rhodes and Bill Blankenship next on Sports Files. so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Congratulations to you for being in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl game. Speaking of rematches, you had to rematch game with UCF in the Conference USA Championship game, so having to beat the Golden Knights twice in three weeks, that was tough. Well, UCF's a really good football team, and uh, uh, George O'Leary and his staff do a great job, and uh, getting past them the first time was a big, big hurdle for us. That gave us the opportunity to host the Conference Championship, which is a, certainly a big deal. Uh, but knowing you had to turn around two weeks later and, and kind of prove it uh, was going to be a challenge. And, uh, you know, went to the wire and had to get to my overtime, but uh, at least finally got, got that thing done and uh, got a chance to be here at the, the Liberty Bowl, and that's a pretty exciting thing for us. Now, you guys knew exactly what a victory would mean. You would be making the trip to Memphis. Paul, you sat and you waited to find out what was going to happen with your team as far as the bowl was concerned. You had some terrific wins during the season. Lo and behold, you get the call from the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, and I would imagine you were quite happy to hear that phone call. We were elated, yeah, because we waited and waited and, and waited as, as the uh, final weekend of, of play took place, and, and the uh, BCS struggled and swapped, and, and uh, uh, teams were invited. So, yeah, we were elated Sunday night to be able to go into our weight room and announce it to our football team, and, and uh, they were very emotional. All right, your initial reaction when you get the call, you're going to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, oh yeah, we're playing Tulsa. We're playing a team we've already played this year, first week of the season. Your thoughts on a rematch with the Golden Hurricane? Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, we knew going into that game to begin the season, it was a very pivotal game for us. Uh, we knew the great challenge that uh, we were facing. Um, they are a very well coached football team with, with great talent and obviously they go on to a 10 win season and, and uh, Conference USA Championship. Uh, after that game, week after week, it was Tulsa won again, Tulsa won again. We knew just how very fortunate we were. So uh, facing this daunting task again, we know we've got another great challenge. And Bill, the elation, the joy of winning the Conference Championship, you're going to Memphis and then you find out shortly after that you're going to have to play Iowa State your battle with the Cyclones for a second time. Talk about that. Well, it was a little different because we knew we were in the Liberty Bowl. We were right. just waiting to see who the opponent was. And it seemed like we waited and waited and waited and waited to find out who that was going to be. And uh, frankly, we were excited because what we wanted was a quality opponent. We want somebody that, uh, uh, that we can be excited about and, and know that, uh, you know, they're going to stretch us and, and they put it on us pretty good the first time. And uh, we know what to expect physically, very physical football team. And, and again, it sound like we're on the pep rally here, but uh, this is a well-coached football team. And uh, they've been doing things well ever since Coach Rhodes has been there. And that's the kind of people you want to do battle with. You want to kind of put your chips down and say, you know, let's tee it up against some, some folks that we respect and, and that we know are doing it the right way. I don't have to tell you guys this, but most successful teams progress week to week to get better and better. So I would imagine 
your teams are both a lot different from where they were in that first meeting. Paul, let me start with you. Talk about the progression of this team as the season went along. Yeah, quite a bit different. And, uh, uh, and of course, over the course of the year, you're going to have some injuries and you're going to have to adapt and change. Right. And, and uh, uh, we're without a, a first team All League Big 12 linebacker who uh, Bill would be the first one to say he's a dang good football player, and, and uh, we miss him. We've we've started three quarterbacks uh, uh, over the course of the season, and, and uh, you know as as we thought we we had an identity going into the season um, with our offense in that game. We've had to tweak and change as that's gone along, as things have been taken away from us and so forth. So, the film that you looked at in August is quite a bit different from the film you look at in December and, and, and both of us will be uh, scrambling to come up with great preparation for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And Bill, same question, I would imagine the same type of answer. It's true. I, I think a lot of where we were in the first game is we, we knew we had a new quarterback uh, replacing a third-year starter. We knew we had some new offensive linemen and, and a, a defensive unit that uh, had some guys that were, we were replacing and, and bringing on to the scene that we were happy about, but you just didn't know what identity you'd find. And I, I think we learned a little bit about ourselves at Iowa State, uh, even in a loss. And then over the next weeks, I felt like we found ourselves maybe a little more, a little more of our identity uh, offensively for sure. And uh, defensively, we kept getting a little stronger, and part of, partly because we were playing with a veteran squad on defense, a lot, of, a lot of seniors, eight seniors. And when you have that kind of leadership, you can continue to improve if you stay healthy. And we stayed relatively healthy on defense. One thing besides getting to play in the bowl game, which is terrific for not only the university, but obviously for these young men, is you guys get to coach a lot more and almost start to prep for next year as well. So you get that little bonus. But then again, the bowl game is so far removed from the last game of the regular season, it's almost like having a new camp. So let me start with you, Bill. What's that like I mean, with the practice schedule and getting the team fired up once again after you had that, that time off? Well, first of all, it's absolutely vital if you're going to keep growing your program. Uh, this, is a, this is a time that you get to practice and get to, to grow your team. Um, that's an, I think it's almost like an additional spring practice. Uh, we're going to have opportunity over this weekend, the next weekend, and, and just leading ourselves up into the game time to practice some, some guys that haven't been traveling, that have been red-shirted, and, and give them a lot of quality work as we get ready to move into actual game prep. Uh, you know, as we get closer to game prep mode, I mean, it'll be real intense and, and focus strictly on Iowa State. But that preparation will be what all of our players need to go through if they're going to learn how to become you know, good quality players that can travel. Paul? Yeah, this weekend's a fun weekend. Right. Uh, coming off the road, recruiting in, in this great event, and, and uh, now going back to practice is really exciting because there's no, no pressure uh, of game planning and, and, and boy, you got to do this right or we're going we're, we're gonna to lose this football game. It's just about ball practice. And, and uh, so uh, we refer to it as development practice. We'll have a lot of snaps. Uh, with our young guys that haven't stepped on the field for one snap this season, mm -hmm. and it'll be a, it'll be physical, it'll be hard hitting, it'll be fast, and, and then we'll be done and, and uh, ready for the next one uh, throughout the weekend. Obviously, there's mutual respect between you two and between the two programs. How would you describe Iowa State from the game that you played against them, from what you know of Paul and his team, when you're talking about what you're going to be facing in the Cyclones? Physical, disciplined. Uh, they know who they are, and they, they play their scheme very well. Paul? Yeah, I mean, I could just echo those thoughts. And, and uh, Bill talked earlier about uh, this is a fun bowl game uh, because of two programs that, that I would uh, categorize as do things right. Uh, they play a brand of football that Bill and I both like. We're hard-nosed. We're physical. Um, we are detail-oriented and, and organized. Um, you know, our fan base might have started talking about that right away while we're playing Tulsa again. There's no problem with our football players because they know what's in front of them and they appreciate this, mm -hmm. this kind of football game. All right, I asked you to describe each other's programs. Now I want you to describe your program. For those watching this here in Memphis and the surrounding area, they're getting ready for this game on Monday. How would you sell Iowa State to the fans, Paul? Well, I, I think we're passionate. Uh, we like playing the game, and I think that shows, and I think that's one of the reasons why our fan base has been so energized over the last four years um, since we took over the program. 
you can get told your kids play hard in two different ways. Uh, after the game, well, boy, your kids play hard. Right. And it's, it's a backhand compliment that you don't ever want to receive again. Mm -hmm. um, but I was watching tape one Sunday, uh, and I put the remote down and, and because I was just amazed at how, how hard our kids were playing and, and their pursuit uh, and, and the relentless effort from, from the time the ball was snapped through the whistle being blown. And, and, and I'm really proud of that when we, when we put our product out on the field. And Bill, talk about your product at Tulsa. I would say they're tough guys. I think they're resilient. Uh, we've faced a lot of adversity. We've played from ahead. We've played from behind. We've gone through overtime. We've had to score on the last series. We've had to hold, hold teams on the last drive. Uh, we're exciting. Uh, our defense is, is one of the tops in the country in getting sacks and tackles for loss. Um, we, we play, I think, a, a, a little bit of an old school brand of football, and, I, and people don't like to hear that, but we're going to run the ball. But we're going to set up all the other stuff as well. And I think that part of that helps you to uh, find your identity and, and toughness. And I think people still like to see tough football. Right. Without giving away any trade secrets, uh, let's talk about the keys to victory. Let me, let me start with Tulsa. Obviously, you have a three-headed monster at the, at the running back position. You've run the ball really well, but you've passed. You've got a nice balance there as well. And you talked about the defense. But one key area, Bill, that you really have to, to play well in to have a chance to beat Iowa State. It's going to be special teams for us. Uh, we've had some mistakes there that we've got to get shored up during this time. Uh, certainly kicking and, and punting and protecting and all those kind of things. Uh, you have to do things right all across the board. Uh, and then the big thing is we've got to take care of the football better. Uh, we've not won the turnover battle in recent, uh, recent weeks, and you're not going to have those kind of flaws and win a, a good bowl game against a great opponent. Paul, you're playing the fun and gun Big 12, so you obviously got to be able to score the ball and, uh, and play some defense as well. You talked about the quarterback situation this year. What's the key for Iowa State to beat Tulsa? I think you got to score points because they're going to score. Uh, we're, we're under no illusion that we're going to uh, hold them to this amount of points or that amount of points. So offensively, we got to find a way to score points. And, and we, we might run at this percentage or throw at that percentage or so many yards, but you got to find a way to get in the end zone and, and not just kick field goals. And a big piece of that is the turnover game. Uh, to, to me, it's the most important stat out there is, is turnover margin. And, and a big part of that turnover margin is if you're fortunate enough to get them, where are you getting them for your offensive football right, team? Right. I know we've scored a lot more points when we've had short fields to work with over the length of the season. Very beneficial, is it not? Very short beneficial. Field? <laughs> Let's talk about the, uh, the, the fan base, the excitement um, for this bowl game. I know you're going to have uh, fans from Tulsa and from Ames here to support you too, but What's it been like with, uh, let's start with you, Paul, with, with Iowa State and the excitement of, uh, of coming here to Memphis to watch you guys play in the Liberty Bowl? Really over the top, and I think the first week out, we're on record pace as far as uh, bowl ticket sales for, for our university. It is the closest bowl game in proximity to Ames and, and, and uh, our, our university. Wow. Yeah, re re really neat when you can jump in a car and, and, and drive and uh, enjoy New Year's Eve and, and enjoy Christmas at home. Uh, a little bit less expensive than going to New York City over the holidays. I can, I can <laughs> promise you that, which we did a year ago. And had a great turnout, um, by the way. We did have York. a great turnout. Our, our, our fan base is extremely loyal, uh, and, and I know the stadium and the streets will be lined with Cardinal and Gold. Forty years since... Iowa State's been in Memphis, so it's a 40-year anniversary for the, for the Autos on Liberty Bowl. Tulsa was here, as I remember, fondly in 2005. You had a great following, Bill, and uh, the, the school had a lot of fans here. I remember the, the billboards that they purchased to thank Memphis for the hospitality, so I know the Tulsa fans are excited to come back to Memphis. They're absolutely over the top. Um, Memphis is, is the destination of choice of our folks. It's just the perfect distance. They want to be able to get there on the drive. They want to be able to get there a little bit economically, but they want to go someplace that's different and, and special. And uh, 2005 was a special year for us. I mean, I was here as a fan. Uh, my son was the, uh, a GA on the, on the team and uh, had friends coaching there, and I'm an alum. So I was here, and I was one of those guys in blue and gold that was uh, you know, down on Bill Street and having a big time and going to the game. Uh, I've heard for six years since I became a coach, you got to get us back to Memphis, coach. You got to get us back to Memphis. So 
I think our folks are really excited about it. Right. This is one for Bill. It's completely off topic. Yeah. But for all the Memphis fans out there, obviously they have a new head coach in Justin Fuente who did a very nice job. You have a great relationship with Justin Indeed. Fuente. Tell everybody about that. Well, I was very blessed to be able to coach Justin. Uh, he was a, a three-year starter for me at Union High School. Um, I, I still, I told you earlier, I think maybe Justin helped get me the job. The, the athletic director and the folks knew that they, they had this gunslinger down that was a freshman and, and they wanted somebody that back in those days was throwing the football around. And, and uh, back in the 90s, I was actually a little on the other end of the spectrum and we were really flinging it around. And, and uh, anyway, got a chance to coach Justin and, and the folks in Memphis, if they haven't found out, are going to know how special he is. Smart, smart young man, loves the game of football, a great teacher, and uh, I've never seen him do anything that he didn't do with great excellence. And so uh, I'm confident he's going to be as successful in his career as he has been the last part of the season. Right, I'd like to end my interviews with, with, with my guests having a little fun. It's called Five for the Road. I'm going to ask you a question, just whatever pops to your mind first, different categories. We'll start off with your, your favorite professional sports team. Paul? Probably the Minnesota Vikings, and that goes back to, to my youth. Uh, growing up just three hours down the road, um, was a huge Matt Blair fan, mm -hmm. who, who happens to be an Iowa State Cyclone. Uh, got to meet him for the first time uh, this year. He's been down to a couple of our football games and, and, and spoke to our football team. Uh, I'd, I'd probably strongly go with the Minnesota Vikings. All right, the Vikings and Bill? Well, last year I became a big Thunder fan. I mean, Oklahoma City Thunder just took over our part of the country, yeah, and uh, Kevin Durant and those guys, I love them. So it's the Thunder. How about your favorite all-time athlete, Bill? Boy, now you're going back. I, I don't know that there's one, but I'm going to stay with the basketball theme. I'm, I'm a magic and bird guy. Okay. One over the other? No. They're, they're, I, think, I think you can't they're have, be can't have one together. without the other. Right. Yeah. Paul? Right. Oh, I'm, I'm going to cop out. I'm going to take an easy answer. I'm going to take Iowa State's Jake Knott. And, and uh, I, I think our, our kids would appreciate that. Jake's not going to be able to play in this game. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you numerous stories uh, uh, about his toughness. And, and I'll just uh, uh, tell you one. Um, we're getting ready to play uh, Baylor this year. He tears his shoulder the week before against Oklahoma State. Doctors say his, his, his college career is done. He talks to the doctor into Thursday, letting him play one more game. <laughs> um, but you can't take any medication. You can't do, do anything to mask any kind of pain. Throws on a brace and goes out and earns all Big 12 honors what in, a in his outing. Says an awful lot that you think of him as your, your favorite athlete. All right, real quick, we'll go through these final three. I don't know if you guys are into music, but favorite musician or group or genre real quick bill oh uh taylor james taylor james taylor yeah. jt john mellencamp oh look at that there's a midwest guy you gotta love john cougar mellencamp okay let's do television your favorite all-time tv series Ooh, all time all-time show favorite show what do you like paul survivor um, and, and the reason I say that, it's just fascinating to watch these people and how the mind works and how they try to connive. And we've sort of, it's sort of become a tra tradition with my family. I got two boys and my wife, and right. we watch it together. It's not quite camp in Ames, but it's close, yes. right? Yes, right. Bill? Oh, this is, this is probably going to get me in trouble, but 24 when it was on. It was a terrific I had a, had a great with, series with, there. With uh, Sutherland. Yeah. Okay, Keeper Sutherland, final question for you guys. Your favorite movie of all time, and is it a sports movie? Big Jake. Big Jake? Who was in that? John Wayne. Oh, okay. we're going way back. Bill? It's not sports, but it's Tombstone. I, oh, I, I got to go with Tombstone. Yeah. That is a great movie. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. And once again, congratulations to you. Well, 2012 has come and is just about gone. And as usual, in the sports world, we've had some amazing moments. 
Former Ole Miss quarterback Eli Manning once again led the New York Giants to a come from behind win over the New England Patriots, this time in Super Bowl 46. Former Memphis Tigers coach John Calipari won a national title with a freshman laden Kentucky team. And LeBron James quieted the critics, at least for a while, as he led the Miami Heat to an NBA championship in a season shortened by a work stoppage. And then there was Johnny Football Manziel winning the Heisman as a redshirt freshman. We also saw the Summer Olympic Games and more heroics from Michael Phelps and the U.S. women's gymnastics team. Closer to home, Dustin Johnson won the FedEx St. Jude Classic. Andy Roddick played in his final Memphis tennis tournament, and the Grizzlies were upset in the first round of the playoffs. Then we received the news that the team was sold to Robert Parra and a strong local minority ownership group with an agreement to remain in the Bluff City for a long, long time. There was also two former Memphis prep sensations who shined on the world sports stage. Alabama center Barrett Jones, the former ECS standout, helped lead Alabama to its second national title in three years and are now primed to make it three out of four when they face Notre Dame in a little over a week. The academic All-American is the most decorated collegiate player to come out of Memphis, and his head coach Nick Saban, who was recently in town, had nothing but praise for his captain. Well, Barrett Jones is uh, not only a great player and provides great leadership for our team, he's a fine young man. Uh, obviously, you know, I think one of the most prestigious awards in college football is the Campbell Award, which he received for academic excellence, community service, leadership, um, and being a fantastic player. And uh, he's got some pretty good teammates. Uh, our offensive line has done a nice job for us all year. And, uh, Barrett certainly contributes to that uh, in a lot of ways because the center is the leader of the group. In addition to Barrett's sensational year, another former Memphis High School star had arguably an even better one, if that's at all possible. Former Houston High School pitcher Matt Cain was sensational in helping lead the San Francisco Giants to their second World Series title in three years. All Cain did in 2012 was throw the 22nd perfect game in Major League Baseball history, pick up the win in the MLB All-Star Game, and pitch the clincher in the Giants' first two playoff series, plus start the World Series clincher. And one other thing, Kane signed the richest contract by any right-handed pitcher in the history of the game at $112.5 million. So here's the Matt and Barrett, and here's to all the athletes from the preps to the pros who bring us together and give us something to cheer about. So now the question is, what can we expect to see in 2013? Okay, here are some bold and some not-so-bold predictions for the new year. Alabama will make it seven straight BCS championships for the SEC as the tie defeats Notre Dame 28 to 13. Later in the year, previously mentioned Barrett Jones will be selected somewhere in the mid to late first round of the annual NFL draft. The New England Patriots will return to the Super Bowl as they battle the San Francisco 49ers in New Orleans. This time around, the Pats hold on to a late lead as Tom Brady captures game MVP honors while winning his fourth Super Bowl title. The Memphis Tigers cap off their final season in Conference USA with yet another men's basketball championship, taking the regular season crown and the more important tournament title, defeating Marshall in the finals. The Tigers will move into the NCAA tournament with momentum and will win their opening game, giving Josh Pastor his first and only win to date in the big dance. Unfortunately, the Tigers will lose in the next round and fail to reach the Sweet 16. Also, Florida will win the SEC title, knocking off defending national champion Kentucky. Later in the year in golf, Dustin Johnson will try to successfully defend his FedEx St. Jude Classic title in Memphis, but will come up short. Frederick Jakobsen will take home the top prize and the seersucker jacket. The Memphis Grizzlies will make the playoffs as a four seed, win a first round series, then fall in five games in the Western Conference semifinals. The offseason will be an eventful one with the team making a major trade. The trade will include a heavy emphasis on acquiring draft picks. Head coach Lionel Hollins will have his contract renewed for three seasons. He'll continue to be one of the best bargains in the league. On the diamond, the Atlanta Braves will ride a strong pitching staff to the National League title, while the big bats of Albert Pujols, Mike Trout, and newcomer Josh Hamilton will lead the Anaheim Angels to the title in the junior circuit. The Halos will win the title and take home some October gold. And on the gridiron, the Memphis Tigers will duplicate their total win output from 2012 by winning four games in season one in the Big East. Elsewhere in college football, Ole Miss and Mississippi State return to bowl games. Brett Bielema's first season at Arkansas shows vast improvement as the Hogs qualify for a bowl, and Butch Jones and Tennessee get the six wins and also reach a bowl game after being shut out in 2012. As for next season's Heisman Trophy, no repeat for Johnny Football, 
although he'll once again put up some big numbers. The Heisman Trophy winner will reside in Columbus, Ohio, as Buckeyes quarterback Braxton Miller takes home the hardware. And that'll put a wrap on our final show of 2012. I hope you have a joyous and prosperous new year, and we look forward to continue to provide you with the most in-depth and entertaining interviews in local, regional, and national sports right here on Sports Files. Don't forget to see any of our previous shows. Please visit our website at WKNO.org and click on KNO Tonight. And we'll see you again in 2013.